Well, welcome back to our next episode of the Fearless Future podcast. We're your host, Glenn Schwarm. And Amber Schwarm. And today, we're going to be talking about why rich dad, poor dad is now more relevant than ever. I don't know about you. I read that book, gosh, got to be 30 years ago. Years ago. Yeah. I'm dating myself now. But it was before uh, Audible. <laughs> Long before Audible. Long before Audible. Yeah I, yeah, I had to actually read it. Yes. So it was, it was more challenging. But, you know, he was really revolutionary in his thoughts. Now, I don't know if you follow Robert, Robert Kiyosaki. Kiyosaki. Yeah, you follow him today. He's a little bit far right. He's a little bit, he's a little bit conspiracy theory kind of guy. He gets Can out be, there. Yeah. yeah, some of his podcasts and but, stuff. But. but it's also like you always talk about, you know, people have to do things that are shock value. You know, you wonder how much of that is, yeah, is right. true and ingrained or how much is just for to get attention. Yeah, hard to say. But anyway, but I, but I like his stuff. And as a matter of fact, you, we had a chance to meet his wife. Yeah, Kim. She was great. Yeah. Well, soon to be ex-wife, woman. I guess, right? Yes. They've been getting divorced for, what, five years? Long time, I think. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like that. With that. Lovely woman, with though. With that many houses, it's kind of tough to yeah. tough to uh, to break up. So She's a powerhouse, though. She was great, right? Yeah. It was good getting to talk to her and yes. learn and, you know, talk about her from a woman's perspective. She's really powerful in her presence. She's, but she's like super, which... But she's also super down to earth. So yeah. I think that's like a really, really good mixture because... <laughs> She talked about one of the companies that she was running and, and things weren't going well. And she just like went in and just like axed everybody and started from scratch. And that takes a lot of like confidence and oh, yeah. strength and, and everything to do. Because when yeah. when things aren't going right, yeah. you have to make a, an executive decision. And she yeah. did that and then built it back up to be something something great. But she, uh, she impressed me. If anybody's never read uh rich dad poor dad you have to get it. it's probably got to be 30 or 40 year maybe 30 year old book it was probably written back in the 80s yeah but it's one of those things that's timeless it really is you know? yeah it's timeless it was a, it was a real eye opener for a lot of real estate investors back in the day and i was one of them yeah because i got reading about it and thought wow this guy makes a lot of sense talking about assets and liabilities and why you want to buy assets and why you want to use liabilities and use leverage to buy assets to get the income up but early you know i started my first business as you know at 19. Mm -hmm. And I, there, I want to pull up this quadrant and take a look at it really quick. He called it the cash flow quadrant. And this is kind of what set him off and what made him so popular because there was four areas to this quadrant. This is all how you bring cash in. So one is you're an employee. That's the E part mm -hmm. of the quadrant, right? And then the S part is the self-employed. I love how this, the employee is you have a job. The S is self-employed means you own a job. Right. That's the left-hand side of the quadrant. You want to start moving yourself to the right side of the quadrant, which is the B and I. And the B is business owner. People work for you. And then the I is an investor where money works for you. And sometimes people get those confused as far as the self-employed and business owner. They, they do. They, they think it's the same thing, but it's clearly not. You know, one of them, one of them, you're creating your own job. Yes. And the other one, you're owning your yeah, the business owner. We should talk about business ownership for a minute, too, as we start kind of as we, we lay this down, because I think it's important to know, you know, again, why it's so much more relevant today, even than it was back then. But there's a few different kinds of business owners, right? Right. So you have your technician, technician right? And technician does all the work. Right. Um, the technician, you know, I think people confuse technician with technical like right. a, a technician has to be a painter but it could be anything it could be a hairstylist it could be a doctor it could be a lawyer it could be you know who's a technician in our world our vet right so if you think about it we just went in and booked max an appointment right she sits behind the desk right now she does have one person helping but for the most part she is a self-employed yep. business owner so she owns a business as a vet so people think wow she's a veterinary right she must make all kinds of money and she she may it's, it's really a glorified job though she a job that owns her, yeah, right. Because because it's a great lady, great vet. But the right. truth of the matter is, if she's not if she's not working, she's not getting paid, right. If she's not seeing dogs that day, or setting appointments, or collecting your credit card at the end, right, right she's not getting paid. There's no revenue. So I think in. people get confused that. But then <clears throat> then you have a manager, business owner. That's where it starts to be better, right? Manager business are like for you and I. When we had our first assistant back 15, 18 years ago in our flipping. No, that wasn't fifteen. It was more like eighteen years ago yeah. now. She came to our house, right, three hours a day and worked at our kitchen table. Kitchen table. Sometimes I was just waking up. I'd be like, oh, good morning. Come on, our pajamas. Yeah, come on. Yeah, <laughs> we come out and, and uh, make breakfast right in the right little two bedroom condo we had. And she worked at our kitchen table on a computer and that's what she did. And so we, we had, we were, we, I think people start as, they start as self employed, mm -hmm. right? If you want, if you're an employee and you're stuck in that quadrant, you're only going to make just so much money. Right. I think it's important to realize that you're only going to make so much money. And, and you likely will never, become wealthy working for somebody else because you're making you're working no. to make somebody else's dreams come true yeah it, 
unless you can get some ownership in there, or right. unless you can, you're building something amazing. If you're, you know, if you were part of Facebook in the first few days, you know, every now and again, well, people, there's always anomalies, but I think by and large, you have to go with. I, I think that I think that on social media today, I don't know if you agree with me or not, but I think on social media, people glorify those people. That what, what's the other guy's name? Edward. Uh, the other owner of Facebook. Oh, yeah, I forget his name, but yeah. Edwards, uh, I forgot Not his scissor name. hands. <laughs> I don't think it's Edward scissor hands, no. Thank you for that intellectual uh, answer, but no, Edward, uh, I can't think of his name. Anyways, but he, you know, he is a guy that's worth multi-billions of dollars, and I think that we glorify these guys, so so a lot of the younger generation thinks, all I have to do is just, just hit it big with one yeah. company. You have a better shot of hitting the lottery. Right. You know what I mean? You think you have more in your control because you're building a business, but you have a better chance hitting the lottery than you do hitting a business like that. I'm not saying don't do it. I'm just saying that just have your expectations set that, you know, you want to make sure. So you start as a self-employed person. You move to a manager position where you have somebody working for you. Then you want to move into the entrepreneur mm -hmm. space. So as you move to an entrepreneur space, now you do what we do now a lot, and that's thinking, mm -hmm. right? So our... Visionary type stuff. It's funny that I think people might like to know about our, tra our, our path because it was you and I flipping house. We flipped our first house. Yep. And then we, the second year or third year, we got, I think the second or third year, we got an assistant. Yeah, I forget, but yeah. It was around, been, the, around it's, the... It's been a minute. Yeah, it has been a minute. But the, around the third year, we got an assistant, and that we started to be a manager position. We were there for a long time. Yeah. And even... We, when, we were still very much involved at that point, though. Yeah. Yeah. And now... We, 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 we had different roles in the company. We did. But we moved to... When we moved down to Florida... Our business now, as you know, operates in upstate New York and still does about 100. I think last year was about 86 deals, mm -hmm. um, you know, a little bit slower a year, but around that 100 mark a year of wholesales and, and uh, flips and, uh, and rentals. And so we now, I was just telling you the way here today, I was saying, I was saying hey, there's, if you think about it, I'm reduced where I was going to meetings every week. And now I'm not even in meetings every week. Now right. I meet with my integrator who's a, a woman, Meg, who's an amazing leader, been with me for six years, and she runs all the day-to-day -day operations of the company. She's in charge of the profit and loss. Mm -hmm. Her job her job, and her her livelihood is all dependent on how, how much profit she generates for the company. So she manages that whole thing. That's where you want to get to as a business owner. Yeah, and I, I've been truly in the owner's seat of that for quite a while. When we moved to Florida, like all I'm ever really involved in is maybe some financial meetings every now and then and just yeah. kind of know where we stand and and yeah. that's it like the day-to-day -day stuff and all yeah. the stuff in the weeds I'm, i've been out of for a while now i think sometimes people don't people don't necessarily i think it's important if you start a business you understand you i think you want to think about getting to that level yeah not every not every business ever goes to that level not every business wants to go to that level you might be a realtor and you kind of run your own gig and that's you're kind of a realtor or somebody else and that's it fine you have a glorified job but don't think that you own a business Unless you can eventually walk away from that business, yeah. right? So it's just something to think about. That's we can we can dive in a little bit deeper another day, but but I think that's important to know that in that quadrant we have to get there. Then the last the I is where you want to be, and that's the investor where you have mm -hmm. enough cash that your money works for you. So in our case, it will be owning enough real estate or having enough cash in real estate that the real estate generates money for us to live our lifestyle. At the end of the day, passive income is where it's at. Right? Yeah, and I think I think too um, another reason that. Rich Dad, Poor Dad is, is still relevant today in 2024, even though it was written however many years ago, is that he really does encourage entrepreneurship in that pursuit of, of building side income streams. And yeah. in today's day and age, like you were kind of talking about wanting to hit it big with the, the next big thing, a lot of people, like they, they're kind of calling this like the side gig society. Like, like all the young people today yeah, don't jobs. really have one job. They yeah. have all these side gigs. And, and so he encourages that kind of thought process. Yeah. So I think too, you know, he's real big into, Hey, let's have a business, but let's buy assets. Yeah. Cause if you don't buy assets, if you're an investor, if you're not buying assets, then you're not really building long-term wealth. Right. And so I think that that's where, as we talk about why it's more relevant today than ever before, let, let's clarify an asset. Liability costs you money and an asset pays you money. Mm -hmm. If you, if you buy a cash flowing asset, so if you buy an asset that pays you money, then that then asset is I like with real estate, I like it's a hard asset, right? We can drive by, we can see it, feel it, touch it, smell it. Right. Don't always like to smell it. But it's you know, it's it's something that we see and we can we can it's very tangible. Right. One of the biggest assets that people will ever invest in their whole lives is their home. Right. There's some discussion online if that's actually an asset or not, but right. I truly believe that it is, which I'll go into into a different episode. Yeah. But do you agree? I totally agree. And, and like you said, there's some arguments against it. And I think a lot of new homeowners today don't feel like it's an asset because it's not it's not creating wealth right away. But there's 
you know, there's, there's, we live in this immediate gratification kind of society, yeah, right? Do, yeah. So, so your, your primary residence can be more of a long-term play. And I think you have to wrap your arms around that because it's still going to build equity and it's still going to appreciate and all those things. I've talked to two moms recently uh, from the kids' schools and both of them said they bought their house not even that long ago, a few years ago. They bought their house on the water here in Florida for a million dollars. And one of them is getting um, knocks on their door all the time to sell their house for about 3.5. Yeah. And then the same, the other one, they bought their house for around a million. And we said, why in the world would you want to sell it? Because you have such a low interest rate. She goes, I know. She goes, but I'll never have another interest rate again. Because what they're going to do is they're going to sell their house for a little over $3 million. They're going to take the profit, buy another house and pay cash for it. So they yeah. don't have a mortgage at all. Yeah. So tell me that's not a smart choice, you know, to, to buy yeah. something, let it appreciate, sell it later on, and yeah. then use that money to, to fund your future. And, you know, it, people might say it's been an anomaly in the past few years, which it has been, We, you know, but that's the way it always but goes. But it still appreciates. <clears throat> it always appreciates, Whether, whether yeah. it's been an anomaly the last few years through COVID or not yeah. is is kind of a, a no, not, not a good point because real estate typically appreciates and doubles in value every 10 to 15 years, depending on the market. Yeah. We've talked about that a million times, yeah. and, and that's what history shows. So I think that, you know, one of the things we talk about with Rich Dad, why it's important to buy assets is that the poor and the middle class, they work for money, right? They mm -hmm. work, they get a job, they get money. The rich have money work for them. Right. So I think it's it's so important that people understand the mindset of where they want to go. And this is a this is a lifelong journey, right? You have to learn, you have to mm -hmm. educate yourself. And I think that you have to also learn about where the tax burden falls. Right. You hear all the time about the middle class getting squeezed out. That's been, we've been hearing that for years, years. but it keeps happening. Yeah. The middle class is getting smaller and smaller. It's, it's starting to be the poor and the wealthy and the middle class yeah. getting smaller and smaller because they don't know how to manage the money. They don't know, they don't know how to not pay as much in taxes. And so they, they're always getting grilled that I want, I think we should talk today about how, how do you manage taxes through a business? Like when you open a business, why is it that you can write off things that you normally couldn't write off? And I have to give just give a, a, a disclosure here that I'm not a tax professional, in case you didn't no. know. No, I'm not. So you have to talk to an accountant to get all this legal advice. But I'll tell you, give you some general ideas on how it works. Because when you set up a business or an LLC, you know, we have, I don't know how many, 30 of them, right? We have a lot oh, of businesses yeah. and LLCs with our houses and whatnot. But it's important to understand, this is one of the first things that grab my attention, is that if I own a business, I don't care if it's a, you know, a dog sitting business or a babysitting business or a boat cleaning business or a whatever. It could be something very small that you do, what you call it, a side hustle? Right. Right. The people side hustle, them. side gig, yeah. Right. So if you set up an LLC, what happens is most people that have a regular job, W-2 job, as you know, you get a paycheck. Let's say you you get a thousand bucks a week. Well, when you get a thousand bucks a week, I remember our daughter, 19, mm -hmm. Peyton's like, uh, She's like, she's, Dad, I got my check. It really sucked. It was yeah. a lot less than I expected. I go, well. Because she, she was thinking she'd get that much per hour. Yes. And so she's like, she's like calculate, calculating it up yes. in her head how much her check's going to be. Yeah. I said, welcome to New York State. Yeah. I said, welcome to adulting. Yeah. This is what it's all about, right? Yeah. But in New York State, it's even worse because right. taxes are so high. But because they have state tax and all that stuff. But most employees will work, get a paycheck, pay their taxes, and live off the rest. Right. What people don't understand is that as a business owner, you have the income come through the business, then you pay all your expenses, as many as you can, and then you pay taxes on what's left. Mm -hmm. So it's a huge difference in how much you pay in taxes as a business owner. For instance, if you have a business, you can now write things off like a portion of your car, a portion of your fuel, any fuel that you use, not a portion of any fuel used for any business expense. If you have a home office, you have a portion of that you can write off if you choose to on your taxes. So if you're if you're home for argument's sake, let's say you rent an apartment for argument's sake and it's $2,000 a month. And the room that you run your, you have to designate an office mm -hmm. in your house, which you know people designate their own office. Mm -hmm. And if they designate an office and that office is 20% of the size of the entire apartment, then 20% of all the expense of that home can be written off. Right. So things you were going to pay for anyways. Internet, power, phone bill. Trash bill. Yeah. All that stuff, right? Um, that, can, that can all be written off. It could be it could be your TV. It could be some of your streaming services. If you're getting news things, you have to learn for your business, or you know, could be again, talk to your tax professional to find out. Yeah. But if you can take your income, then deduct your expenses. They pay taxes on the amount that's left. You're paying taxes on significantly less, and that's how the wealthy get around it. 
Yeah, you know, you you brought this up earlier, and we've all heard that saying, you know, the the poor keep getting poorer and the rich keep getting richer. Yeah. And I and I think a lot of that is due to that there's a real um, financial literacy or financial education gap. You know, our, our society yes. doesn't promote making smart choices with with your money, or they don't teach it in school. I know my parents never taught me anything about money growing up, other than yeah. other than save it. And I don't think you know they they weren't t- teaching me how to invest. That's yeah. for sure. Yeah. I don't think your parents were either, and or, or most people's parents. So I think rather than take that you know victim mentality of oh the poor are getting poorer and the middle class are getting squeezed, like educate yourself. Yeah, and and that's where a book like this is timeless, and Robert Kiyosaki's advice is timeless, and in investing and making those sound choices and and really getting yourself up to speed on what are your options yeah. what are your choices because it's not taught in school so you're going to have to be your own advocate and really get that education yourself and, so, and there's a plethora of information out there so you oh, can't yeah. claim that you know i don't yeah. know what to do yeah so i don't want to get political but i'm gonna get a little bit political because i i am so sick and tired of the entitlement programs that are out there today i saw the aoc not too long ago it was a it was you know it may have been a clickbait thing but i don't think it was they said well how much should the billionaires be taxed? 90%. Yeah. 90%. 90%. So they provide, you know, 85% of the jobs, jobs in the yeah. country, and you should tax them the most because right. they make the most money. But yet they provide jobs for other people. Right. Are you out of your friggin' mind? I right. don't understand what some of the politicians are thinking when they want to tax people. But then I look and say, okay, now, now Biden's trying to, or I think he finally has wiggled his way into paying off some people's school debt. And that, to me, that, that infuriates me because I'm like, why are you paying off people's debt? They took on the debt. Yeah. They got an education. Go get a job. Well, let's go have to get a job. Well, no shit. So it's like, well, welcome to adulting. Yeah. You have to go out and carve your own path in life. You don't get stuff handed to you for free. But the problem is people don't understand when you when you do that stuff, we pay for it. Right. Our taxes increase. So the middle class, the ones who don't know how to run the numbers, pay the most. Right. Because remember, if you're if you have income, then you pay taxes and live on what's left, you're paying the most taxes. And if they keep increasing taxes, It'll keep going up. Right. It'll go in California. I don't know what the numbers are now. Forty percent. Forty. It's it's an it's insane number. But it wasn't that way twenty years ago or forty years ago. So what's it going to be twenty years from now? Yeah. If you keep letting politicians run away with it, they're going to keep injecting free money and giving free rebates just so you vote for them. You know, this is we're in election year. I can hardly wait to see what happens. I know. It's going to yeah. be crazy. I'm sure on top of another another uh, virus that comes along and shuts <laughs> us all down around uh, polling time. I'm sure we're going to see something like that. But on top of that, you know, how many, how much more money are they going to give away at the last minute? Oh, we decided to give away free this. And they give it away and the people think this is great, but you got to pay for it. And it gets paid for by taxpayers. And who gets paid, who has to pay for it? Middle, middle class. class yeah. And if you don't find a way as middle class to pay less taxes and invest your money in one of those four quadrants, you're screwed. Mm-hmm. I really think you're screwed. I think you're going to wind up one day opening your eyes, being older, going, I have nothing. Like I realize I have nothing because I've been paying and paying and paying. I never got out of my job mentality. Yeah. And do you think social security is going to take care of you or, you know, pensions have gone away and like, like you need to have a plan B. Yeah. Because saving your way to retirement is crazy these days. I think you've got to make sure that you are remembering you have to buy assets, not liabilities. Right. That's the number one thing you have to do is buy assets, not liabilities. Because if you are, when you are investing your money, first off, I would encourage everybody out there to get a business started. You know, we're in real estate. I don't care if you do real estate or what you do. Start a business so you can have tax deductions. Mm -hmm. So you can write things off through your business legally. And again, talk to your tax professional to make sure. And if your tax professional doesn't know how to do it, because some of them don't, some of them are just numbered. You know, not every accountant is created equal. Just like not not every anything is created equal. So find an accountant that understands how business ownership works and how legal tax deductions can be made and help them structure you in a business. Find something you love to do. I don't know what it is, but find something that you spend money on anyways. If you spend money, you know, let's, for instance, if you're a real estate investor and you decide to go on vacation to Costa Rica, well, if you go and visit a house or two while you're there, you can write off all or a portion of your vacation because you were looking at real estate. Remember in the early days we yeah. went, we, we went to, we toured that place in Belize. Belize, yeah. And it was the Phoenix. The Phoenix. Boy, wish we'd bought that back then. I know. Then. Golly, I just sitting here. That would have been a good that, investment. That just, that just dawned on me. That that condo that was probably on like the ocean. three or four hundred thousand at yes, the time. Is yes, that right? Three or four. Yes, it was like three hundred eighty thousand. I thought, wow, it's a lot of money. I bet you that's well oh, in the millions today. Uh, yeah, for that sure. That was fifteen years ago. Yep. So had we had we had the foresight or been able, to, we didn't know how to buy things foreign. We didn't know anything right. about that. But had we done that, this is back before Airbnb was a thing, right? right? So 
Had we known to do that, imagine what that would have been worth today, right? So and buy, we'd have a place in Belize. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah, I know. So again, I'm sorry, I got off on a tangent there. I got a little depressed there for a second. But thinking about that, you want to learn how to buy assets. So again, if you have a business where, you know, maybe maybe you love cats. I mean, go, my brother used to raise cats in the house. That's what he used to, we used to raise Siamese cats. You know that? Gary, Gary, Gary used to raise Siamese cats. Gary, yeah. okay. Gary used to squeeze that cat and hope another kitten would come out because he charged 25 bucks a is, kitten. Is that the the cat that they put in your jam, pajamas and it zipped is. you up? It's the same one. <laughs> yes, that's the same one. They zip them up. Yeah, that cat loved me. Of course, give me some nice scratches every now and again. But if you love cats, start a business around cats. So every time you do something with your hobby, you can write it off. Does that make sense? So if you want to go... It does. I, I don't totally agree with your 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 line of, or your train of thought there, because I think if you're going to start a business and spend your time somewhere, I think you need to make sure that it's wealth-producing. Yes, you need to make it something that you yeah, enjoy. You're but... missing my point. You're missing my point. No. My, no. my point is... If How you... much money are you going to make off cats, honey? But you're not. That's the point. Okay. So now, here, here we go. That's the point. If your business loses money, that's a deduction off your active income. Right. Okay, but but where do you want to spend your time? Do you want to spend your time on a business You're even if you get tech? No, I'm not. You're so okay. So let's say you love cats. So we like cats, but some people are really nutty about cats. And you want to you go to these different you okay, know apparently we're going to open a cats. cat cafe. At no, we're not open a cat cafe. But you know, let's say that you, I don't want to get in the topic of cats, but <laughs> let's say that it's the stupidest business ever. But what if, <laughs> I know. But what if you love cats? And you, you naturally do things. You go to see things. You go to a cat museum or you go to... Then you do stuff. that as a hobby. You don't start a business for correct, it. Correct. Correct. But my point is, <clears throat> the things you're going to spend money on anyways now can become a tax deduction. If you have an LLC, it says, cats are us. <laughs> an LLC. And now you can write things off through that. So the things you're going to spend money on now can become a tax deduction. So you're spending it pre-tax. Okay. Well, you're off starting your cat cafe. I'm not starting <laughs> a cat business. You're missing the whole point. I'm going to go it's start... not what I'm saying. So, you, so you're talking about starting a business for profit. Yes. I'm suggesting that somebody that doesn't really want to have a big business or doesn't want to have a profit, find a way to start a business to get a tax deduction. That's what I'm trying to say. It okay. doesn't have to be with cats. It could be with dogs, for <laughs> instance. It could be something or a ferret. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what the hell that means, but I have no idea. So your, your, whole, your whole train of thought there was all just all about having a business so you get tax deductions. Yes. That's, that's not necessarily the same thing as creating wealth, though. It wasn't. No, it's, it's 100% yeah. different than that. I'm suggesting that learn... Learn the fundamentals. If you do want to own a business, now you got to move through that quadrant. Why are you laughing at me? I'm not starting a business with cats, woman. Okay? Good, because I'm allergic to them. <laughs> Maybe I will start one then. That's probably a good idea. Keep you away from me. All right. So, <laughs> I don't know how I got off on that weird tangent. So, anyway, but learn how to start a business so you can have tax deductions. But now, all right, now you talk. If you want to start a business for profit... Just mock my cat business, will you? And go for it, because I agree with you. Now, now talk to the people that say, "I want to build. I want to build a business that makes profit." I just think that you know, just like the book talks about, Rich Dad Poor Dad and Robert Kiyosaki, he's he's all about buying assets or taking your profits and buying assets with them, because yes. the the whole end con end idea end goal is to create wealth. And in in our opinion, yeah. real estate investing is the way to do that. Yes. And so there's no excuse today. On, on, I don't have enough information or I don't know how to do it because all of that information is at your fingertips. And yep. that, that is one of the problems with the internet is there's a wealth of information, but that's also but the problem of the You internet. said something I want to ask you though. You said use your profits to buy real estate. Can you see why if you had a cat business, you could actually No, because you're not going to have that much profit you from a cat have, business. No, no, no. But you'll put more money in your pocket. You're not paying taxes. I'm going to argue this point. So I want you to not pay I, as much in taxes. I hear right? what you're saying. So the whole point to Kiyosaki and what Rich Dad says is that you want to have a business so you can pay less in taxes. Now, a real estate business, if through, you're using depreciation you could actually wipe away almost all of your income. Here's where I would Active caution income. people. Whether it's that you have a job and you're in the right rat race or you are in the cat race with your cat business. <laughs> um, that, don't that, mock my that cat you, business. That you don't get so busy in that rat race that you don't have time to build your wealth. Because, of, because we've had that Agreed. happen to us. Agreed. You know, we, we've been Agreed. so busy working in the business that we never had time to work on it. Yes. And, and these days, people are busy. People have full-time jobs. They have kids that they're taking to sports. And they have, yep. you know, all, all these millions of things that, that are going on in their lives. So your time needs to be more focused than ever, in my yep. opinion. Agreed. And, and I think Robert Kiyosaki really addresses that in the book as well, is, is, is getting the education that you need and really taking action and focusing and putting your money where it's going to be the best investment Correct. vehicle for you. So let's talk about our friend Becky for a minute. Yeah. Becky, my friend, Love grew Becky. up with. Becky opened <laughs> a business 
uh, something she always wanted to do. She's an esthetician. Esthetician. And when she was down seeing us not that long ago, I said, hey, let me show you how to get a tax deduction. And I introduced her to our masseuse, which was within walking distance of our house. Yep. Walked in, introduced her to, to uh, Elan, and I said, hey, just you guys should talk because if she ever moves down here, she might want to open a spa. Right. So she looked into it because she's talking about moving to Florida someday. And I said, there, this just became a partial tax deduction for your vacation expenses. She said, what do you mean? I said, you just came down here and talk business. So she has a business, yep. right? And she got a tax deduction, which means that now she'll pay less in taxes. Right. And she can count off part of her vacation. Yes. Yeah. So there's a lot of things people don't understand about that. And again, it's the same exact reason that, that Kiyosaki says that the middle class is getting squeezed out. Because they're getting squeezed out because they don't understand financial literacy. They right. got to know how to pay less in taxes legally. Agreed. And, and they got to know where to put their money. And when they do have money, they have to know where to put it. And I would strongly suggest real estate for a variety of reasons. I'm just not a big stock market fan. As so does Kiyosaki. Yes. He's, he's huge in real estate. And so I would strongly recommend real estate because that is where your wealth is. Right. Like that's where you build your wealth through the four things we always talk about. Cash flow, appreciation, depreciation, and debt reduction by somebody else. I have an idea. People could buy a piece of real estate and <laughs> use it for their cat business. I, I don't like you today. Just so you know, I don't care for you at all today. So I'm done with you mocking my cat. It wasn't about the cat business, woman. It was about owning a business to pay less in taxes. <laughs> oh my God, you're a crazy person. So I feel like we have to go to our therapist again just like to figure cat, out how to talk about a cat, cat business. A cat hoarding business. Which I never suggested Wait, a cat speaking business. Speaking of that, we did buy a cat hoarder house one time. I know. That's a whole different conversation that we don't want to talk about today. So, <laughs> all right. I think by and large, though, if we're addressing the book and why the information is still relevant in 2024, um, real estate investing is a really core focus of that book. It is. And so that's really a good place to spend your time, get educated, yes. know what to do, know what the right investments are that you want to do, whether it's residential or commercial, because yeah. he, he does a little of both, or a lot of both, right? Yes. <laughs> not, yeah. not a little of both, but a lot yeah. of both. And it's still a very um, popular and lucrative business opportunity. And when he wrote that book, you know, there weren't nearly as many people that were involved in real estate as there are today. Yeah. So yes, while there's more competition, there's also more opportunity. Yeah. I'm going to do a shameless plug here for us because while that book is amazing for just general business knowledge and where to put your time, where to put your money, how to buy assets versus liabilities and all that stuff, all the education, the financial education, we have a great book you can go buy on Amazon right now called The Birth of the Everyday Real Estate Investor by Glenn and Amber Schwarm, right? Yes, So you do. can go learn about how real estate, not stocks, creates wealth and how the step-by-step -step process that we took to do it. It's a full-on book, 270 pages, yeah. and it's uh, it's there for there for the getting if you want to grab a, a copy for yourself, shameless plug there, but um, you can certainly go do that. But I would encourage people as we close up here to remember, start your business, whether it be a cat business or a real estate <laughs> business. Real start, estate. Start your, I, again, if you're going to be a profitable <laughs> business, absolutely, I hope you didn't miss my point there, but you can start that alongside your current job. Yeah. Like don't don't risk and go yeah, all have, in. Have real estate be your side hustle. Yes. Until, until the income from it surpasses your actual job. Right. And then you have choices to make. That's when life gets really fun. Right. Then you start to have choices and you right. get to decide, do I want to stay at my full-time job? We have a friend, Jeff. We have a friend that was a vice president of a big credit union yep. in upstate New York. And um, he, he did real estate on the side for years and years and years. And he finally got burned out at his job and they started downsizing and asking questions and everything. And he had a choice and he yeah. actually, he didn't get fired. He yeah. quit. Yeah. He quit his job because he had choices yeah. because of what he had built. He had used Kiyosaki's cash flow <laughs> quadrant while he was with his job. Right. And now he's in that quadrant of being truly a self-employed. He has multiple businesses and that kind of stuff. Yeah. So possible. So get out there and start building your own business. Remember, don't stay in the middle class. Get in the rich side. That's where the money's at. That wraps up this episode of the Fearless Future podcast. Thank you for listening. If you liked what you heard, make sure if you're listening on YouTube to like and subscribe so you don't miss anything. And if you're watching or listening on a different platform, make sure you subscribe. 